In this lecture, we're going to briefly talk about two main types of electric currents known as DC currents or direct currents and AC currents or alternating currents. So let's begin by looking at DC current. Now DC current is simply a type of electric current in which the net movement of electrons is in one direction and things like batteries produce DC currents. So let's look at the following electric circuit in which we have one battery with a voltage of 12 volts and a resistor say a light bulb. Well what will happen? Well our battery will produce a steady DC current in which our electrons will move from our anode to our cathode and that means by convention our current is in the opposite direction so our current will move from our cathode to our anode and when electrons move through our resistor through our light bulb it will power the light bulb now what do I mean by a steady DC current well if we are to graph our current on the y-axis and time on the x-axis we will get a steady straight line and that simply means that our current flow does not change and our direction of our current does not change and therefore it's a steady direct current or steady DC current. Now let's look at AC currents. AC currents are simply a second type of electric current in which our electrons periodically change direction. They constantly change direction. In other words, they oscillate back and forth over a very small amount of space. And if we are to graph on the y-axis our current and on the x-axis our time, we would get a sine wave. In other words, our current will reach some maximum, I naught, and then it will begin to drop, reach zero, and change direction and then reach a minimum of negative I naught. So it has a maximum and a minimum, as well as values in between. And this will go on forever, as long as we have a voltage supplying our current. Now, AC current is used to power homes and buildings and houses around the world. So electric companies use AC current. Now the problem that electric companies have is the following. If they take the average of all the values of, of I of our current on this slope, we will get a value of zero. In other words, if we add this guy up with this guy, we'll get zero. Or if we add this guy up and this guy up, we will get zero. But electric companies want to charge us for something, right? They can't just charge us zero amount of dollars or zero amount of pounds um, for supplying us AC current. They have to charge us something. And therefore, instead of taking the average of these guys, they take the root mean square. Now, we already spoke about what the root mean square was in another lecture. So if you don't know what a root mean square is, visit that lecture. Now, so instead of uh, taking the average, they take the root mean square, and that basically gets rid of the negative values. And so now they can charge us. Uh, by using the IRMS or the current root mean square. Likewise, in order to calculate the voltage, they calculate the RMS voltage because if you graph voltage versus time, you will also get a sine wave. Now, in order to find the highest possible I value, the highest possible uh, current, you use the following formula. You take the RMS value multiplied by square root of 2 or 1.4 and you will get our I max. Likewise, because our voltage has the same waveform, when we, when we graph voltage versus time, to get our V max, we also take our V RMS multiplied by square root of 2 and we get V max.